Hey yo, what's up dorks? Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show you guys my new streaming PC along with showing you the basics on how to make one and the parts needed. Now, you boys are probably wondering, uh, Walter, why the heck do you need another PC? And not only that, but one to just stream on? Well, homie, dual streaming setups are where it's at right now, and having the load shared between two computers ensures that one computer is rendering the game to the fullest, and another one is doing the heavy lifting and streaming with its CPU. My Ryzen 9 3900X is great, but it can only do so much while streaming and gaming, so I've decided to make my life easier and make another PC. I know, right? I'm a crazy man with crazy ideas. Leave me alone, huh? Anyways, without further ado, let's go! For starters, we need the parts for the PC. Now, almost every PC out there right now follows the same guidelines and parts to make it. Granted, there are a few exceptions, but for now, this is your average Joe's PC with nothing crazy or fancy. To start it off, every PC needs a CPU, which is the brains of the operation, the GPU, which is the video memory, memory itself, which is the RAM, a motherboard to situate the items onto, some storage, so you can store all your memes and questionable videos, a power supply to electrocute your components, and lastly a case to put everything on. Uh, but a case isn't always needed, especially since uh, you can make a PC without one, funny in it. Oh, almost forgot, a screwdriver. All you really need to build a PC with is a screwdriver, that honestly is it. Anyways, let's go over the parts. For the CPU, I went with a Ryzen 7 3700X, a great CPU with 8 cores and with all the wiggle room. It can definitely stream at where I want, 2K 60F, but brought down to 720p 60fps for streams. Did I mention that I also got it for 200 bucks? Not bad at all, boys. Next we have the GPU. For this build, it isn't very important, so I went with the GTX 1060 3GB from MSI that I picked up from OfferUp. Up next we have two sticks of 8 gigs of RAM, totaling up to 16 gigs of DDR4 G-Scale Rip Jaws at 3200 MHz. Pretty cheap, but good RAM. For the motherboard, I went with the MSI B450 Gaming Plus Max, perfect since it has another slot for my Elgato Game Capture 4K60 Pro MK.2, which will be used for streaming my other PC, basically in, in an internal graphics card. For storage, I went with a Western Digital Blue M.2 SSD at 500 gigs. Usually I would buy an SSD for the operating system and a hard drive for games, however since this PC will not be playing many games and since I already have an external 5TB hard drive, the 500 gig SSD will do. Not to mention I love the Intel one I got from the last video, however this one was on sale and that was in a rush. Next I went with this previous power supply which I believe was rated at 550 from my previous builds. Still in great condition and will definitely work for this PC. Lastly for the case I went with the NZXT H510. I've been a big fan of NZXT. Great cases for cheap and they do look nice for the price. One gripe I do have with them however is the airflow in the system but it's nothing crazy for the average Joe. And if you're overclocking, I would highly recommend water cooling if you have the space. Alright, now that we have the parts, let's put it together. First, I like to start with the motherboard. Take it out of the box and situate it onto the anti-static bag that it came with. I like to place it on top of the box while I do this, but the table will do just fine. Next we have the CPU. Since it is AMD, I will show you how AMD does it, however, your, if you have Intel, you can find the CPU process online to put it on. Anyways, I'm going to grab the Ryzen 7 3700X and place it into the slot. But before I do, I must check for the triangle located at the top of the card, or my bad, the CPU, and line it up to where the motherboard is telling you to put it. Very hard to see in the video, but there is a picture on screen. Since the CPU was pre-owned, the thermal paste that comes with the cooler is no longer good, so I had to wipe it off. However, if the CPU is brand new, you would just have to place it on top and secure it, since it already has thermal paste on it. Unfortunately for me, I have to put thermal paste on the CPU, but it's not that hard. Either go with the P-size drop in the middle, or go with the X-minted, and voila, you're going to cool your CPU. Next, place the cooler on the CPU, and make sure to either screw it in, or clamp it in using the motherboard clamps. I have the Wraith Prism cooler 
that comes with the Ryzen 7 and above CPUs. So here you can see me struggling to clamp it on. But the ones with Ryzen 5 or below are better since you only need to screw them in, which is pretty, pretty easy. Next, I went with RAM. This one is pretty straightforward. Your motherboard's manual should tell you which sockets the RAM should go with for dual channels if you have four slots. If you only have two slots and two sticks, then even better since you just put them in there. First, pull back the clips on the motherboard and line them up to the line on the bottom of the RAM to the motherboard and with some elbow grease, push it in until you fully hear a click and can visually see the clips latch onto the RAM. Repeat for two slots and you should be complete. This may be a lot of stuff for hard drives, but since I have an M.2 SSD, this is easier outside the case than inside. So grab the screw that comes in your motherboard box and screw it in. You may need a smaller screwdriver for the M.2 drive screw, and you may need to adjust the stand with it in the motherboard, but with enough fiddling around, it should work and boom, M.2 drive complete. Up next is the case. Open it up and find little components inside, such as screws, mounts, etc. Up next, grab your motherboard I.O. shield and place that bad boy in the back of the PC case. Up next, carefully place the MOBO in the case, lining the holes on the motherboard with the screws in the case, while also aligning the I.O. shield with the motherboard. Once they all align and, and the back is on right, screw in the motherboard and you should be done with that part. Up next is the graphics card. The GTX 1060 takes up two slots in the back of the PC, so if your case has this, unscrew the hinges and remove the two or however many slots your card takes up, and place it down on top of the PCIe slot you have on your motherboard. Remember, it should be the top one, the bottom one limits the bandwidth and I highly recommend placing it on top. Anyways, now you would align it into your PCIe slot with the hatch open at the far right, push it in and let it click. Once done, I would say move it around a bit to make sure it's secured, and then finally if it is, screw it in. I would normally say you're done here, but for me, since I have another PCI slot needed for the internal capture card, I would do the same thing and screw it in once done. Note, these screws were a pain to unscrew without the proper head, so that's just a heads up for some of you in some cases. We're practically almost complete. Now, this part of the build is where we add the power supply. So grab those screws that came along in the case and screw in the power supply in the bottom of the case or wherever it is situated on yours, maybe the top, but for me it's the bottom. Now, the power supply must be situated wherever the hole of the airflow to enter is. The fan should be facing the hole, so pretty much the fan on top of the PSU should be at the bottom if the hole is at the bottom of your case. And it may look upside down, but you have to ensure the PSU has enough airflow to not blow up in two weeks. Now that the power supply is completed, now is the finishing up part. Pretty much what you have to do now is connect the power cables to your motherboard, such as the CPU and the motherboard power, along with the PCIe slot if your graphic card needs it. Next, connect the case cables to the motherboard. Your motherboard should help with the process, but it should be straightforward for most cases. Hide the wires and make the PC look nice, especially if you can look inside of it. And presto, you got yourself a console killer. Well. Right now, no, since the Xbox Series X is a thing, but in a few years, yeah. Anyways, look at this beauty. It honestly brings me so much joy making PCs, and the process is always fun, but sometimes stressful. But it makes up for it. This PC should, knock on wood, last me many more years to come. How many exactly? Well, maybe another 5-7 to seven years. If I upgrade the graphics card. But for the most part, this will just be used for streaming from a capture card. Well, we're not out of the woods just yet, however, it's mostly easy camping from here. Try to get the thing to post and troubleshoot if it doesn't work. Moment of truth, baby. Moment of truth. Hey, the plug's not even on. Okay, the mouse turned on, so that's good. shit damn we lit up all right what about the yeah future walter here she didn't want to post spent like an hour or two trying to figure out what was wrong turns out the cpu wasn't situated perfectly on the motherboard probably happened while i was trying to put the cooler on it 
but reinserting it into the motherboard fixed the issue and here we are. Okay, it's uh, two. I started like at uh, the 10 o'clock or whatever. It's like 0029 already. It's like freaking midnight. Uh, so I'm a retard. I uh, put in the CPU wrong, I guess. Um, first time it felt kind of loose, but uh, it kind of didn't go with my gut feeling and I just had it there. Uh, so the problem was the DRAM, uh, don't mind the DRAM though, it wasn't even the RAM, the RAM's still working good, it tested good, so it was just a CPU, but the BIOS wouldn't even load and it wouldn't even post, but after Googling like 40 minutes of uh, information and then trying it out, it works, and now I've posted, um, it's gonna be lit, homies. Well, there you have it folks, that's the ins and outs of pretty much making a general gaming PC. I know I made a video prior to with my dad, however this is more of a quicker version of it and I made this PC from the ground up, compared to the last one. If you have any questions regarding making PCs or what parts to use etc, let me know in the comments below. I would love to help you out in making a PC and I'm pretty sure other gamers as well. You don't have to, but if you want to follow this build part but like part but like I did, you can find a list to buy the parts in the description for Newegg, but I highly encourage you to look for them individually elsewhere, like on OfferUp or other sites for cheaper. Thanks again for watching dorks, and I'll see you dorks in the next one. Also don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see the benchmarks for the PC later. Anyways, take care guys and don't forget to tip your waitresses.